I bought you a video yesterday about my initial views on what happened in Liverpool to the taxi driver David Perry. All the papers are saying he's a hero and all the papers are supposizing as to what happened in the events leading up to the explosion in his cab. I guess uh, for a little while we'll never know the true events but certain information is starting to make itself known and I will bring that to you right now. How do everyone? Welcome back to the channel for a Tuesday. Hope you're doing all right. I certainly am. Listen, if you haven't done so already, can I ask you a favour? Can you please subscribe to the channel? It's completely free to do. You just hit the subscribe button and the notification bell underneath and give the video a like. Thank you very much. Well, let's talk about David Perry, shall we? And what happened in Liverpool? Okay, so there's a lot in the press about the motivations of this individual that had the bomb and how he came to be in this country in the first place and the poor, poor elderly couple that took him in into their home and treated him like family. I feel so sorry for them after, you know, what has happened and I only hope they can be okay. But let's go to the uh, journey itself. By the looks of it, uh, David was called uh, to do the pickup with the individual concerned. Now, a lot of taxis and a lot of taxi firms now use apps and uh, the jobs are usually thrown in a pool and it becomes uh, made available to the first driver available within range of the pickup, if you get me. So it's by complete chance that he probably ended up with that job in the first place, but I'm quite willing to be corrected on that. I'm just telling you from what I know. He picks him up and he's asked to go to the Anglican uh, Cathedral. Now, reading between the lines, that's his initial target. He goes and uh, goes to drive him there and the bomber decides to uh, change his destination to the hospital where the incident happened. Okay, so we go to the hospital, we pull into the car park, bang, the uh, device goes off. Thankfully the full device didn't go off, it was just the detonation package exploded and thankfully for all concerned the entire device didn't because there was ball bearings and all sorts stuffed in it. It really would have been carnage if that whole device exploded. I dread to think what would have happened next. Now, I'm led to believe that in Liverpool taxis there is a screen uh, separating the driver from the passengers in the rear of the car, which apparently absorbed an awful lot of the initial blast and ensured that David survived it, at least, uh, in body, although not completely unscathed. About six to nine seconds later, David managed to get himself out of the car and uh, holding his head in his hands, staggering away from the car. There's pictures online you can see of all this in all the Daily Mail and everything else. He's screaming at people to keep away from the vehicle because in his mind he obviously knows what's happened and what could happen next. Shortly thereafter, the vehicle with the bomber inside bursts into flames and the person inside, the passenger or, or the person that was killed in the explosion, as the mainstream media uh, puts it, let's just say I'm not very happy with the way they made that sound, died. So the only person who died was the bomber. Thankfully, David Perry got away with scratches uh, and cuts and a burst eardrum. It could have been a lot, lot worse. I'm sure if a screen wasn't in, in place, he could well have been killed as well. His wife turned around and said there are lots of rumours flying around about David locking him in the car and driving to an alternative destination by his choice and not the hospital. Uh, to try and save lives but at the end of the day the sheer fact is he's lucky to be alive. Now inside taxis uh, as well as protective screens 
We also have panic buttons. We have means of communication with the main office and everything else. And I, I have to wonder, and I guess we'll never know, did David know that guy had explosives on him or it just happened uh, by chance? I, I guess only David himself will answer that and it comes out and uh, you know in the next few days when he's able to speak about it if he wants to but i don't know what i'd do in that situation i i really don't well i've done uh the kind of work that david does and i do airport work now and it's not so bad with airport work but when somebody gets into your cab you've got a very limited amount of time to size them up you know, are they smiling? Are they looking moody? Are they drunk? Do they look like they might have other issues? Do they look like they're concealing anything that could be at personal risk to you? These are all the questions that go through your mind before that passenger gets in. And if any alarm bells sound, you don't let them in and you drive off. It's as simple as that. So did this passenger not reveal himself to be what he was? And David got him in the car and just thought he was a regular guy on a regular taxi fare. Who knows? We'll find out. But all I want to say is uh, I'm damn glad he survived this. Uh, the bomber has passed away before he could carry out his objective, which was obviously mass carnage. And again, I feel so sorry for that elderly couple who took him in that were sucked in and led to believe he was who he appeared to be and I guess more information will come out in the next few days and I'll obviously keep you updated when I see anything. This is Gabby Cabby signing off. Toodaloo.